Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 7 talking about testing AI based systems as an overview and looking forward to continue with our next segment which is 7.5 documenting animal model. Well, in this particular tutorial, we'll be trying to understand what are the important components which we look forward to document for an AI-based system while working on it. The typical contents for the documentation of an AI component includes, there are different options, let's go one by one each one of them and understand a little better. We have general, of course there are some general entities and components which we should be taking into account for making a note of it, which is identifiers, descriptions, developer details, hardware in requirements, license details, version, date and point of contact. Of course there are these common information which we always look forward to have it in the documentation so that we can refer them at any point which are required. Similarly, when it comes to design, we do have assumptions and technical decisions which are made during the design forums and workshops and we do document them for any kind of future references or at least to act as a basis. Usage, it includes primary and secondary use cases, typical users, approaches to self-learning, known biases, ethical uses, uh, safety issues, transparency, decision threshold, platform and concept drift. We'll be talking about constant drift in a short while when it comes to the next tutorial. Data sets, of course, data is another important aspect. So we do include features, collections, availability, pre-processing requirements, use, content, labeling, size, privacy, security, bias or fairness, and restrictions or constraints, which are certainly inclusive in all our discussions in the past about data sets, what we need for training the email model, and at the same time, evaluating the models. So testing, if we do uh, data sets, we do take care of all these parameters. Similarly, the next one, when it comes to testing, of course, the test data set should be covered in the documentation. Description and availability should be inclusive as a part of that. Independence of testing, like how independent the testing team was, test results, testing approaches for robustness, explainability, concept drift, and portability. Talking about training and ML functional performance, of course there are several matrices which we can take into account, in fact which we have covered in our previous chapters. We should be looking forward to make a note of them, uh, however that helps us to determine how exactly the ML model is performing and what other matrices out of it. So we do have ML algorithm, the weights, validation data set, selecting of ML functional performance matrices, threshold for all the ML functional performance matrices, and actual ML functional performance matrices. So there's nothing more to discuss. Of course, these are very straightforward to the point things which have been covered one or the other way in our previous discussions, which you should correlate to. So it just tells you here that what are the major components of an AI-based system, which we should look forward to document for any further references. Following that, we are also talking about uh, there are further things which helps improve uh, the documentation which we write. So clear documentation certainly helps improve the testing by providing transparency on the implementation of an AI-based system. The key areas of documentations that are important for uh, testing are the purpose of the system, of course, because uh, the objective, the goals which are not defined, then it does not make any sense to an individual that what exactly the system is expected to do. Now, when I'm referring to individual here, I mean that it is test engineers. For, its, for test engineers, it is very crucial to know what is the expectation of the system and how exactly we can derive that. So purpose of the system, the specification of functional and non-functional requirements, now these types of documentation typically form part of the test basis, which is pretty much true, without which I cannot proceed defining what is exactly needed. Similarly, when it comes to the architectural and design information, which outlines how the different AI and non-AI components will interact with each other, this supports the identification of integration testing objectives and may provide a basis for white box testing of the system structure as well. Of course, uh, relating to our, some of the fundamental concepts from foundation level, we do know that designs is uh, one of the basis, uh, designs are one of the basis for integration and system testing, and then certainly it would be helpful for deriving the required test out of it. 
Talking about specification of the operating system, this is required when testing the autonomy, flexibility, and adaptability of these systems on these platforms. So of course, the description, the information related to the operating system, which could be considered as a part of the environment, should be documented, which would help the testing team to really understand what is the target environment. Similarly, the source of any input data, including associated metadata, these needs to be clearly understood when testing the following aspects. Now, what is that? Of course, functional correctness of untrustworthy inputs, explicit or implicit sample data. Now, here the implicit and explicit sample data certainly means that the data which are considered to be valid and there are data which we get from the real time. Flexibility, including the mislearning from the poor data inputs or self-learning systems. So what kind of flexibility does the system own or have? And we can look forward to talk about it. So that should be documented. In fact, the testers know what are the challenges which we can face. Additionally, the way in which the system is expected to adapt to changes in its operational environment. This is needed as a test basis when testing for adaptability. And finally, the details of expected system users. This is needed to ensure that testing can be made representative, which is with respect to the end users, what they are looking forward to have in the system. As far as this meets all the desired expectations, that would be more helpful to say that the system would be meaningful to their target audience or else it may not be making any particular sense. So put together, these are all my AI specific components which we should look forward to when it comes to documenting the information about the AI-based system while testing it. Well, that was the whole tutorial all about. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.